The moment I've been waiting for, pun intended. Back in September of 2018, I placed an order for a very special lens that fits onto my smartphone. And today, this little black box arrived. This is the anamorphic lens by Moment. And I am as excited as can be to finally get this lens in my hands. I have always wanted an anamorphic lens to use on my projects. However, if you're familiar with anamorphics, you know that they cost a lot of money and they're typically out of the reach of amateurs such as myself. But this lens from Moment is approximately $150 now, for the purposes of this video, I'm not going to go into what anamorphics are and how they work. If you aren't familiar with them, go ahead and research the topic. It's really fascinating. You'll probably go back and view some of your favorite films with a whole new set of eyes. But for those of you that are familiar with anamorphics, let's continue. So what we're going to do today is take a look at the product itself. I'm going to show you what it looks like, how it mounts, and we'll conduct a few tests to see if this product really lives up to all of the hype. Because up until this point, the only people that have been able to get their hands on this lens are the influencers. You know, those big accounts on YouTube and Instagram. And of course, those big names in social media. Whenever they review a product, it always gets good marks. But as you know, I like to show you exactly what it's like to purchase and use products. Since I don't receive any money from these companies, I show you exactly what it's like. So let's take a look at the Moment Anamorphic Lens. Does it really live up to all of the hype? Is it something that you should invest your money in and use on your projects? Well, let's go take a look. Here it is. The Moment Anamorphic Lens. On the back of this card, you see simple instructions on how to attach the lens to your Moment case. The construction quality is excellent. This thing feels like a tank. The glass appears to be high quality. The body is made out of metal and coated on both sides. Also included in the box, there is a lens cover. It fits on the front of the lens like so. However, there's no cover for the rear, so I would have some compressed air on hand in case you do get some dust particles back there. Attached to the carrying bag is this little tool. This comes in handy because, as you can see from this alignment guide, some phones need you to turn the orientation of the lens. And of course, to use any moment lens, you need a moment case, like you see here. Your smartphone fits right in. It has a nice lip on the front side to protect your screen from drops, and the rear features your choice of real wood or black canvas details. And on the bottom, there are holes to mount a carrying strap. These cases are a little bit slippery. As you can see here, it easily falls out of your hand if you're not gripping it tightly. If you compare that to this case, which is a generic eBay TPU case, my phone almost sticks to my hand. Also, these moment cases attract dust in the lens area like I've never seen before. The dust here is after a couple days of normal use. So, be prepared to carry around one of these camera blower brushes to brush out and blow out the dust before you attach your moment lens. And let's go ahead and attach that lens now. Look for this mark on the side of the case and the corresponding mark on the rear of the lens. Line them up. Give it a twist until it stops. And there you have it. Your portable anamorphic 
film studio. Beautiful. So typically, when people think of anamorphic lenses, they think of the visual characteristics, such as the horizontal blue lens flare, the way that these lenses change bokeh from being plain Jane round to being like a stretched out oval shape, and of course the dreamy depth of field. You know, depth of field that doesn't look like a uniform, uh, like a Gaussian filter that you might apply in a video editing program. It, it has that really unique, almost as if you're looking at the background through water. So those are the criteria that I will be judging this lens on today. And for our first real-world test, lens flare. And it definitely passes this test. Blue, streaking, anamorphic lens flares for everyone. Michael Bay would be proud. Next up, the oval bokeh test. In this scene, I'm trying my hardest to get those string lights in the background there at this outdoor cafe to appear oval-shaped rather than the usual round. And as hard as I try, I just can't do it. Okay, so how about a dreamy depth of field test? Focusing on the dashboard of this car, the background should be out of focus, and it should have that dreamy, magical quality to it. Even if I adjust the iris, I just can't make it happen. Okay, moving on. So what then would be the benefit of this lens? Well, you still are able to get a wider field of vision. So in this scene, what we're looking at right now is the built-in lens on my smartphone. Notice that our field of vision ends on the left with that tree trunk and on the right just after that fender. Now if I go ahead and attach the anamorphic lens, we should be able to see a lot more to the left and right. And sure enough, we do. We are able to see on the left past that tree trunk and on the right way past that fender, you're able to see a tree stump that you couldn't even see before. But actually, wait a minute. That tree stump, that whole right side is, is a little bit out of focus. Well, that seems weird. I wonder if there's a defect with this lens? Let me try out a more detailed, up-close subject. Again, starting out with the built-in lens on my smartphone, everything appears to be highly detailed, and everything is equally in focus. So let's go ahead and attach the moment anamorphic lens again here. And of course we get more in our field of view, but yeah, that right side is a little bit blurry compared to the left. Let me go ahead and crop in on that right side. Sure enough, see how the bottles on the right side are just a little out of focus, where the ones on the left are razor sharp? There's actually a defect in my anamorphic lens. This pisses me off. I waited so long to receive this lens and it just let me down right out of the gate. Okay, some of the issues that I experienced are minor. Yes, the moment cases, they're a little bit slippery in the hand compared to a TPU case. But, you know, you can put a strap on the case, put it around your neck, and you don't have to worry about dropping your expensive smartphone and shattering your lens on the ground. And then there was the issue of the moment case. It seems to collect a lot of dust on the camera lens. But if you carry the camera around your neck and you keep the moment lens attached, there isn't going to be all of that dust collected there. However, if you're using a strap and you're carrying your smartphone around your neck, then that kind of defeats the whole purpose of uh, smartphone photography, doesn't it? Because most people keep their smartphone in their pocket or their purse. If they wanted a smartphone hanging around their neck, then wouldn't they just carry around a normal camera? I mean, think about it. The reason that smartphone photography and videography is so great 
is because your smartphone is always in your pocket with you or in your purse. So if you're gonna have to carry all this extra equipment around, then it totally defeats the purpose. You, you would just carry a dedicated camera. And then you have the added benefit of a camera with an APS-C sensor or a full frame sensor, you know, something that's actually gonna take advantage of all of these fancy lenses and give you the sort of depth of field and other visual tricks that you can't accomplish on a smartphone. So really, what's the point of these lenses? These might be minor issues depending upon your point of view. I mean, if the lens worked as promised, it's okay to put up with a few inconveniences. But the big problem was the lens didn't work as I expected it to. The entire right side of each image was out of focus. And then there's the issue of bokeh. It seems to me that because of the small sensor size on the smartphone, it was next to impossible to get that elongated, dreamy bokeh that you see in a feature film. So to summarize, would I recommend purchasing this lens to my friends and family and you guys out there? I just, uh, I just can't. If this were like a 20 or $30 product, yeah, it would be fun to play around with as a toy, but when you're talking $150 for the lens, $30 for the case, at that price point, you're almost in the ballpark to buy an SLR Magic and a Morphot and hook it up to your regular camera. So this product, it was a great idea. It just didn't live up to my expectations. Do any of you out there have this lens? Have you experienced any of the issues that I did? Go ahead and leave a comment below whether you agree with me or not. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video and I hope that you subscribe to my channel. This is Vlognosis, signing off.